DevTech Media. Subscribe to DevTech Media. DevTech Media. Subscribe to DevTech Media. Hey friends, welcome to Luchimi David, your host and producer at DevTech Media. This is your number one news channel where news trending videos, political news, gospel music as well as entertainment is concerned. There you go today, I've got an update to give out to the public out there. Watch this. Member of Parliament, guest speaker Professor Lumumba, CEO Eden University, Comrade Calvin Kaunda, Ministers present, Honorable Mutati, and the Council of Eden University, all protocols observed. I am here to discuss challenges of youth leadership in Africa. One of the most dangerous things to do, it seems in present day, at least in my country, Zambia, is to aspire as a young person to play an active role in governance system. Our society is organized in such a way that luxuries, opportunities, resources, and responsibility are exclusively monopolized by elderly folks. Elders woefully create and sustain environments where for most young people, especially those born from underprivileged homes, it is almost impossible to aspire and be anything significant in society. Young people are often wrapped under a blanket of condemnation as useless beings whose time to play any roles in society lies in the future. Hence, a tired slogan that youths are future leaders. Such slogans find expressions in a nation that young people cannot think for themselves and must be laid under captainship of elders. We see this kind of arrangement manifesting in our daily lives in many societies where even institutions that are established to attend to youthful matters are laid by people who are not youths. Such arrangements are always unworkable. We all know that orders have discriminatory view against youth participate, participation in matters of significance. Therefore, to trust orders with, with youthful matters is like to expect goats to arrive at the intended destination when the driver is a hyena, as exposed by Professor Lumumba himself. Youthful matters can only be handled by youths themselves because they are the ones who understand their own problems. This is not a request, but our right. Colleagues and friends, elders and senior members of the academia. Over time, we have lived under this veil that systematically put youths on the touchline as spectators in matters they should have a role. Currently, there is a paradigm shift. The August elections have given birth to many youthful leaders in councils, parliament, and even cabinet in Zambia. Notably, most of the young leaders like me confronted all the mechanisms that were put before them by elderly folks to prevent them from playing any role in governance. Some of my colleagues like myself were not abducted by their respective parties only on account that they are young and nothing else. Our different abilities seem to be nothing worth looking at by these people. I have no doubt that young people are beginning to realize that slogans such as youths are future leaders are meaningless. While there is still hesitation to allow young people to play roles in their own affairs, we are changing these dynamics. We shall not fall down and watch such arrangements and challenge. Elders, comrades and friends, allow me to point out that not all those who claim that youthful leaders should be taken seriously because even among us are sellouts and imposters. We must not be like Julius Malema of the economic freedom fighters in South Africa, who seem to be a champion of youthful affairs, yet all he does is yapping around without any actions worth talking of. As I depart from this issue, let me put it out that it is clear elderly folks suffer from 
Sinocelocophobia, which is the fear of an empty glass, the fear young people as if we have promised to drive them to sea when all we want is to have a stake in our own affairs. Let me turn to one issue that is closer to my heart, Professor. I am a student of Pan-Africanism. My views are influenced and shaped by Pan-Africanists like Kwame Nkrumah, Nelson Mandela, Thomas Sankara, Julius Nyerere, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, who was our founding president, our founding father in Zambia, Steve Biko and many others. I've had read enough literature on different ideologies and have fallen in love with the idea of Africans espousing their own. As Africans, our existence revolves around three influences, traditional norms, modernity, and religion. Pro Professor Lumumba, I wish to bring to your attention that while black theology challenges religion in its present form, I wish to focus on modernity and tradition. It is clear that our African tradition is under heavy pressure from modernity. Many societies in Africa have thrown on the window their respective norms in preference to modernity as conveyed by the West. That is why many African leaders are globetrotting in search for solutions of their countries in the West, forgetting that African challenges can only be sorted out by Africans themselves. Professor, permit me to take you back to what our former late Republican president had to say, Dr. Frederick Jacob Titus Chiluwa. The West look at African countries to identify their puppets, to divide nations, and identify genuine nationalists and pan-Africanists whom they must attack. President Chiluwa had to put it further that once you see an African leader being extolled by Western elements, know that there is some sinister cooking against the people of that nation where such leaders come from. They will come with some of the most sweetened claims of offering financial and material aid, but beyond what the Suffet suggests, they are nothing but wolves out to cut right on the throat of Africans with their teeth. We have among African leaders elements that are Western puppets. They gain power with the help of the West. The relationship between such is of father-son kind of arrangement. When the African countries face challenges, they go to their fatherly Westerner to beg for financial crumbs. Yet the bullying father figure figure makes his wealth from the very African countries through stealing its resources. These Western elements thrive where there is confusion. The wars and instability we see in many African countries is a direct consequence of Western forces. We fight among ourselves and are busy stealing from us, Professor. Comrades here and abroad, we must never believe in leaders who are puppets to the West. They are sellouts. We must remove such Western puppets because they are embarrassing us to our ancestors who think we are cowards. Professor, permit me to report further. We are prepared to walk in the footsteps of African countries. And as we commit to wage war against ideals that destroy Pan-Africanism, we are aware of the fact our comfort is not compatible with our cause. These are things we will sacrifice for to ensure that we do not betray those that fought hard for our own sovereignty. I'm here by waging a crusade against the unwritten West-based school of thought and replace it with an Afrocentric or even a Zam-centric magazine. I am against an attempt by the Western to outer Africanism by forcing onto us cultures which conflict human nature, such as gay marriages. I want to put it out that I have great respect for former president, Republican president of Zambia, for standing firm against these Western val values when he refused to allow such unholy practices as gay marriages in Zambia. President Lungu's stance may have cost him so much, but it has earned him 
dignity, admiration in the eyes of two Pan-African champions. I want to also pay growing respect to the former president for conceding defeat and peacefully handing over after the loss of the 12th of August election. In the same breath, permit me to congratulate President Hakainde Hichlema for his victory in the previous elections. Professor, my country that I'm speaking on behalf of is indeed a shining example of democracy in, Af in Africa and the world at large. Professor, you are being hosted in a country that had denied you entry in the previous regime, but this shows you how peaceful this country is, how accommodative we are. Professor, permit me. <laughs> Professor, permit, permit me to acknowledge that a CEO of Aden University is a youth like myself. This is a signal, it's a message that we, the young people, are now in charge of our own affairs. I want to thank Eden University for this wonderful program where ideas are shared. Allow me to thank the CEO, extremely the CEO, and his team because we are young people and we should uplift one another. May God bless Zambia and may God bless Africa. I thank you. Thank you very much for tuning in at DevTech Media. Remember, DevTech Media is the media that shares news, trending videos, political news, gospel music, as well as entertainment. Please don't forget to hit that subscription button and that notification bell to be the very first person to receive the video that will be produced and posted by DevTech Media. DevTech Media, updating you.